Hey guys, welcome to TST Garage. I'm Bart, and today with me is Brian Dexter here. He's part of the TST Industries road racing team and also an inter integral part of our engineering team. We are bringing you a new video showcasing a dyno shootout of different exhausts on the 2007 to 2012 Honda CBR 600 Double R. I think this actually holds for the newer model, don't you think? I'd agree, yeah, not much has changed. Yeah, the motor parameters haven't changed that much. I think Honda was basically just chasing down some new Euro spec emissions yeah. and probably did a different cam degree or something. So we will just consider all of our results to be valid from 2007 up through now. 2019 is the current year. If you're watching this in the future, hopefully Honda has come out with a new model and gave us the gift of a new 600. If not, RIP, <laughs> right? All right, well, we had a great time working with this bike on our dyno in our new works facility. Brian, what do we think about what these exhausts are gonna do to the bike before we went to the dyno? I kind of knew from the get-go that unless you're really making some serious modifications to the rest of the auxiliary components on the bike, so where it's gonna be breathing, the air filter, or something in the internals, the slip-on's really not gonna do all that much for you. When you're, when you're only working from where the cat ends and back, you kind of have to do a little bit more to expect some results there. You're really limited there, right? Yeah, exactly. But what do most guys do on the street? Put a slip-on on. They put a slip-on on and call it a day. This is the bolt-on power that you can expect from this bike if you do that. And that's basically the thesis of this video was to show what that does. And we're not really prejudiced against one versus the other. We actually showcased a bunch of these exhausts that we don't sell. We only sell two of them, Toast Performance and uh, Yoshimura, great exhausts. We match them up against other ones and we'll show you what to expect if you put on one of those exhausts and do nothing else.
All right, so what you just saw was only one of the days that we ran the dyno with this bike on it. I actually attempted to run three different days and we had different barometric conditions and they were rapidly changing. So we really wanted to have results that hold true and are fair for comparison with each other. So I think it's fair to say that these actual runs that we have captured are fairly close to compare and we'll do a fair job of putting them side by side and showing you guys what the results really are. Now I do want to say we had runs that fluctuated all around. We just basically picked for our approach of discussion, we picked the most impressive runs that we actually put down. But um, we could have probably did an average of all the runs that we've done and present that and that would be another way of presenting this, but I think, it would I think be this so is so similar to what we saw here with the peak runs and the yeah. best runs that we got. Yeah, yeah. and uh, if you just boil this down to a percentage gain of horsepower and torque, then uh, this can hold true across you know uh, different barometric conditions, I think, and, and different dynos because dynos do read differently. So um, we did see some peak horsepower gains. Our baseline was at 94.09 for the stock. Uh, with 41 foot-pounds of torque. Acra was uh, one and a half gain, and uh, we saw Toast uh, right about one horsepower gain. Then uh, Two Brothers Racing was 1.1, uh, and uh, Aaron Yosh came in at uh, 1.6 and uh, one. So they're very, very similar as far as uh, horsepower gain goes. If you're interested in the actual percentage of gain that we got, it was, uh, Acro was 1.5% over stock. Toast was right around one. Two Brothers was 1.18. Arrow was 1.6. Yosh was 1.05. Now, that's just the peak horsepower. Uh, if you take a look at the actual curves, you will see that the curves actually shifted up. It's not really just your peak horsepower that matters. It's what the shape of it is. Some, some of these exhausts had a smoothing effect. On, on this rippled up horsepower curve. Also here too, if you see the red is our uh, OEM baseline. You see how rippled it is. All of these really did a really good job of smoothing that out. So uh, that's really what they're for. The actual gain is dismal. We also saw some uh, peak torque gains, but they were very, very small. I mean, on a small motor like a 600, that's just going to be small just from right. this little bolt-on that, that you essentially just breathe better with. The inline fours are not necessarily known for torque exactly no, either. No, <laughs> no, especially 600cc, yeah, so exactly. I'll just I'll just read them off. Acra was 41.74 uh, versus 41.03, so you know, 0.7 foot-pounds of torque. Toast was uh, 41.45 versus 41.03, two brothers 41.68. Arrow 42.02, Yosh 41.41. Now I know a lot of the guys out there will just look at the top peak horsepower number and top torque number, but where's the real secret sauce? What did you ever notice riding your bike in a, in a race environment? With just a slip on? No, I mean, just in general. Does a real high peak horsepower number influence everything or the whole shape of of the no, whole curve. It's definitely more so the whole shape of the curve and just putting a slip on on, again, I'll touch back on the point. It's not really gonna do all that much. So the guys that come to bike night and they're like, oh man, I just put on this uh, like Two Brothers exhaust system and my bike feels so much faster. There's nothing, there's nothing to support that. We have the results here and it just shows that if you do want that performance gain, you're not just looking for sound or aesthetics you do need to go a little bit deeper into the system and get the air filter out of there, maybe replace that with a higher flowing one from a race company or tune. Yeah, tune. You that's, a, tune. that's a huge one too. Once you have it all on there, you gotta tune, make sure that your bike actually knows what's going on around it and utilizes all of those fancy new things that you've put on it. This just goes to show that there's not much to be gained from just slip on. Now, what can you get if you do it right? Why don't we show them? You want to show him your bike? Yeah, why not? All Pull right. It. So this is Brian's Super Sport Spec. Look at that, I'm out of frame. CBR 600. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll cover my torque curve a little bit to yeah. show you guys what you can do if you really do want to chase down power on one of these bikes. 
And so this is my bike up here compared to all of the other exhausts that we had run. Uh, this was run on a similar day. All the uh, conditions were very similar. It wasn't the exact same day. This is another time when I was actually tuning my bike, but you can see just how much room there is to be made if you want to really dive in there and try to tune this bike. Everything that you could possibly have done, I did to my bike to get this big 20 horsepower gap that you're seeing there between an OEM with a slip-on and a properly set up and tuned race right. bike. I really wanna beat this to death. We did a fun little analysis of horsepower gain per dollar spent. And we basically, we took brand new retail prices for these exhausts and everything fell between 0 0.0014 and 0 0.0024 horsepower per dollar. So every dollar you spend gets you right around two thousands of, an, of, of a horsepower. So it's pretty silly. Uh, essentially what you're buying is a little bit of noise and style that you like. Whether you like the Toast style or Yosh or Acra, you're basically choosing style and noise. As far as noise goes, we did have a nice uh, video back in 2016. We took this bike to the track and we did all of these exhausts uh, we changed them out and we ran them around the track. So if you guys like that sort of a video, I invite you to our YouTube channel to see that. Hope you guys had fun watching this video. Can't wait to see what you guys are gonna drop down below in the comment feed. Uh, this will most likely spark some really good conversations and we're looking forward to that. So hopefully you'll find time to mash that like button and give some comments. What do you think about sub subsequent video? I think if we get enough feedback and people seem genuinely interested enough, we could definitely produce more content like this. Possibly an exploration into a slip-on versus full system versus full system with a filter and a tune. Really start getting into that race bike development side of things. Show you how to get to those numbers in this green curve. Yeah. What are we going to use for that? My R6 maybe? Yeah, I think That'd that sounds cool. like a good candidate. All right. You guys let us know what bike you want us to do it on. All right?